Right, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Uh, Happy New Year. I hope you all have a great 2023. Um, and thanks for joining our first uh, Tarot Trust webinar of, of the year. Um, today we're going to be um, doing things again a little bit different because we're going to be welcoming Hannah from um, a um, organization called Lightning Reach, who will be telling you much more about the, their portal. Uh, before um, we, I hand over to Hannah, though, I'm just a, a couple of the usual housekeeping things. Uh, we're recording today's session, um, so uh, shortly after to, um, we finish uh, today's uh, webinar, uh, we'll be posting this up on our YouTube channel, so we'll send a link around um, afterwards uh, to everyone so that you if anybody wants to look back on that, they, ca they can do. And if anybody was unable to make it to today's session and you're looking at um, viewing this on uh, playback, uh, then um, sorry you couldn't make it, uh, but I hope that you again find it uh, today's session um, informative and enjoyable. Uh, we are using uh, the Zoom webinar um, platform as usual. Uh, so um, whilst we've, we've placed people on, on mute initially, um, there's the chat function. So I would encourage you to use the chat function as we go through. Um, I'll be monitoring that um, and there'll be an opportunity um, after Hannah's uh, presentation and demonstration of the portal uh, to have a chat about, about um, what we view today. Uh, Hannah has told me also that she's got uh, a few slides that she's going to be highlighting uh, and re referring to. So again, um, to avoid any kind of, sort of people asking questions, we, we will be uh, distributing a copy of those slides um, in the materials that we send around after today's uh, session. So today's session, we've got we've allocated up to an hour and a quarter as part of our usual time slot, um, but we're not expecting today's session to last that 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 long. Uh, so um, we'll probably be able to give you a few minutes back uh, in your life at the end of today's session. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand over now to uh, Hannah Kanner, who is the Marketing and Partnerships Manager at Lightning Reach. Uh, so welcome, Hannah. Uh, Great to have you here today. Really looking forward uh, to um, um, your demonstration and hearing um, about uh, the Lightning Reach portal. Uh, I'm going to switch my camera and, and, and audio off now, but I'll be hearing the background throughout. So uh, just give me a shout if, if need be. So uh, a big welcome to, to Hannah. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Sharon. Happy New Year to you all. And yeah, great to be here this morning and um, to be able to talk about our um, platform. So I'm just going to share my screen very quickly. I'm also just going to share my audio as well, because if it works, I'm going to hopefully be able to share some kind of videos as well. Hopefully you can all see the slides up now. Um, yes, as Darren said, I am Marketing and Partnerships Manager at Lightning Reach. Um, I actually only joined um, last autumn, so I'm still fairly new to the organisation. But prior to working at Lightning Reach, I was a Marketing Communications Manager at the Association for Charitable Organisations. So they're an umbrella body for charities that give grants to individuals in need. Um, and as the portal largely works with um, charities and grant givers, um, it's been great to be involved in Lightning Reach now, where I've been able to feed some of my knowledge from working with different charities across the country that give grants to individuals and into the development of this project as well. Um, so just a little bit about us at Lightning Reach, we're a tech for good startup, so essentially a technology company that has a social purpose. It was only founded during the pandemic, so we're only about two years old. Um, but really, we saw during the pandemic the struggles that people were having in terms of job security, struggles to access financial support, which has, of course, only been exasperated by the cost of living crisis at the moment. Um, so we look to create a solution to this um, to hopefully enable people to access financial um, support from various different sources in a much more quick and easy and secure way um, than has it been existing up until now, really. Um, so we built this one-stop online portal that's um, free for people to go on and access. It's up and available now um, for people to go to, um, to really 
enable people to find and apply for support from various different sources um, easily. You basically go on, you fill out a short questionnaire, it about, takes about 10, 15 minutes, and then you're matched to all the different options of support. Um, I know some of our customers have compared us almost to like a go compare for financial support. So it's really a case of you putting a few details about yourself. Um, it could be things like job history, location, why you're looking for support, things you want help with. And it pulls up a list, list of different places you can go to. And then in many cases, you can go on and make your application directly on the portal as well. Um, we're working with about 17 different um, providers and partners at the moment. Um, so charities like the Royal British Legion, RAF Benevolent Fund, um, occupational charities that help people within their profession, like the Teaching Staff Trust, Electrical Industries Charity. And at the moment, we're working with Lambeth Council as our kind of first council that's accepting direct applications for their kind of discretionary support schemes as well on the portal. Um, but also looking at some of our impact figures, we've been around about a year in terms of having the portal fully launched. Um, so it took about a year for us to develop the platform and then yeah, been launched since um, November 2021. Um, so, so far, we've helped um, get two million in grants to individuals out to date. Um, and we have 30,000 registered users on the portal as well. So just kind of to reiterate the problem kind of that we're looking to tackle really. Um, so at the moment, there is quite a fragmented ecosystem of support. You've got support from all different places. That could be grant giving charities, benevolent funds, um, local councils, discounted social tariffs where people can save money on their bills. But it's very difficult um, in terms of both organisations signposting people's support and also for people to find support um, through this kind of fragmented ecosystem that currently exists. Um, which causes funds to be missed out on, people not knowing where to turn if they face a crisis. Um, so we're really looking to tackle that by having this kind of one-stop shop and one place that people can go to for support. Um, we also find that people find, you know, the application process typically a lot of places can be quite frustrating. It can be lengthy. There's a lot of back and forth having to submit different pieces of financial evidence, bank statements, all that kind of thing. And we're really trying to simplify that process so that everything can be done through our online portal. You can upload all your details, financial evidence, you can link your bank accounts and everything like that through the online platform um, and send everything off to the grant giving organization. So we're really trying to streamline that process for individuals and make it much less frustrating and easier to do where possible. So yeah, a bit about the solution as well. So as kind of already covered, really, we're really trying to link up that support to have it all in one place. We've got housing associations, grant making charities, local government, social tariffs and we're importing a benefits check all onto the platform as well so just having that all in one place and we're also working through at the moment trying to get um, local schemes from various kind of local councils um, area by area loaded onto the portal so we've got hundreds of different kind of discretionary schemes warm spaces food banks um, on the portal as well so if people can't find something that they can apply directly through the portal there's hopefully other places um that through the portal people can apply support through as well and be directed to different websites to find other sources of support that matches their needs as well. Um, so for people facing financial hardship, the benefits of using the portal really are that they can access multiple providers. It's simple, free, and a secure process that is all done through the portal. You're not emailing off different documents or posting different documents off to support providers to prove your eligibility for support. And you're avoiding having to do repetitive forms and paperwork, having to tell your story multiple times. Um, if you want to apply for different forms of support, you're really filling out your details once. A lot of that information is then pulled across for each application that's sent through the portal as well. And for organisations providing support as well, we're helping streamline the process for them, um, really, that they have everything together in one place. They don't have to do a lot of back and forth with people asking for different um, forms of evidence and they can hopefully get support then out um, much quicker to individuals. And um, some of the stories we're seeing from some of our providers like um, Royal British Legion, they're saying where it used to take weeks to assess an application, it's now just taking days to do through the portal, which is fantastic to hear. And um, yeah, that's just another slide sort of highlighting the key benefits, which will be sent out um, with the pack as well. But it really it is just to make it much easier for the end individual. Um, for also signposting organisations and advisors, we're creating that kind of one place that they can signpost people to as well. So at the moment, we're hearing a lot of times that you know they might have links to different places and all different things like that. But now we're just providing that kind of one place that hopefully signposting organisations can send people to where they can then find support that meets their needs. And the platform's been designed in collaboration with the sector as well. Um, so when Lightning Reach was established, it um, created something called a Social Innovation Council, where it essentially got lots of grant-giving charities, local councils and organisations providing support together. 
um, to feed into the development process. So um, that's actually how I was introduced to Lightning Reach because through my relationship with the Association of Charitable Organisations, I was part of that Social Innovation Council. So Lightning would come to us and the sort of council of other grant giving charities and organisations and with their plans um, and every two weeks we'd meet up and discuss what they developed, look at the questions they are asking people, making sure it was meeting both individual needs and organisations needs um, and yeah, sort of feeding into the development process that way, which has been really quite a unique way to develop it. And um, we've also had a lot of input for end users as well. We have a unique user experience um, person on our team that regularly sort of tests on the functionality of volunteers um, and speaks to people that have received grants through the portal have used the portal to get their feedback as well into the development process we're always looking to kind of improve develop new functionality and make things better as well so I have a short demo video um, so it's just a two minute video that basically shows someone's journey as to going onto the portal um, completing their details, matching to support, and then applying for support to really show how easy it is. Um, so yeah, I'll just play this. Hopefully you can hear it, but let me know if you don't get any sound or anything like that. If no sound yet, Hannah, but okay. I don't know if we're supposed to be able to hear it. Uh, okay, that might be. Let me restart that actually. Because housing provider, my bank. Right. Yeah, got it. My, that's it. Yeah, I'll put it to the start then. Brilliant. Sorry about that. I'll play it now. Let me walk you through a typical journey for anyone seeking support. I can find out about this free and secure online portal from a range of sources, including my local council, my support worker, my housing provider, my bank, charities, or various websites. I sign up by entering my email address. I then complete a profile which will help me identify support I may be eligible for. It's a quick and simple three-step process. Step one, I complete my profile. Step two, I get matched to support. Step three, I submit an application. I fill in a simple set of questions to access a range of support suited to my circumstances. This can be completed by myself or if I have a support worker, they can help me through the process. This can be done on a computer, smartphone or tablet. It takes just 10 to 15 minutes. With my profile complete, I can now see what support I've been matched with. Great, it looks like I may be eligible for a range of grants, local schemes and tariffs, which can help me to save money and boost my income. These cover some essential household services, energy, water, internet, as well as other financial support available in my local community. These matches will be saved, so I can return to them at any time. I will get an email whenever new support options are available for me. For some providers, I can go on to make a direct application through the portal. I'm informed about how my information will be securely shared before proceeding. I can now complete the information required for this specific support scheme without repeating my details. With my consent, Lightning Reach can automatically verify my identity. If financial details are required, I have the option to connect my accounts quickly and securely through online or mobile banking. It takes a matter of minutes to complete. I select my bank and get directed to my online banking login page. I can select and connect all the accounts I have with that bank in one go. I'm able to upload any supporting documents required. With the information complete, I can now submit my application. Success! I've submitted my application. My dashboard has now been updated. From here, I can edit my profile or access further support at any time. As you can see, the process is straightforward and takes just minutes to complete. It saves lots of time searching and applying for support that I need. So yeah, that was just to briefly show the user's journey. And one thing I will say, it's kind of um, the platform's been built on a kind of mobile first approach. So we found that most people do go on to that and use their mobiles in order to find support. So we have built that with that in mind. But any device that can access the Internet, so tablets, PCs as well, and people can go onto this um, portal. It's just a website, essentially, um, to use it as well. Into the next slide. Let me walk. There we go. 
Um, but yeah, as I said, we've been around about a year now and we've been sort of then looking at our yearly impact figures. So on the screen there, you can just see some of our sort of um, numbers and quotes from individuals and organisations that have been using the portal. But yeah, as I said, two, two million grants awarded over the last year, which has been absolutely fantastic. 30,000 um, registered users. And um, what I will say is um, for people registering, um, if they don't match the support at the moment, because then we are new, we only have, as I said, about 17 different partners where you can apply directly through the portal, although we do have those additional sort of signposted schemes as well. We are constantly speaking to new, new support providers and onboarding new support. So if someone does register now, even if they can't necessarily find something to apply directly for at this moment, we do um, send emails out to people. So if they do match to something, based on the data they've submitted onto the portal and um, that we then on board. So it could be, for instance, that, you know, they're working in a certain profession and we've then added that profession's charity at a later date onto the portal. They'll get an email notification saying that um, this, this new provider has been added and you might be eligible for support for them as well. So we do notify people of that as well. And um, yeah, we have 94% satisfaction rates. As I said, we, we survey people at the end when they complete the portal. We also speak to a lot of end users as well. So we're really pleased to see that people are happy with the process and, you can see from some of the quotes there that people are saying, you know, they've done it within 10 minutes. It's been the easiest application process I've ever done. Um, people are finding that they're receiving support from organizations within days instead of weeks. And um, in terms of organizations are saying it's managed to improve their systems, streamline the process, um, help in terms of times and costs for organizations so they can get that support out to people um, much quicker than they were before. But yeah, it's, it's great to also hear from our end users. So I've um, got a story here from Martha, who was able to go onto the portal and find support for her family. So I'll play this video as well so you can hear from one of our users. So I was um, a victim of domestic abuse. My partner had moved out of the house. I would had to leave my job and I had no income at all coming in. It's really accessible. It's really user friendly. It's simple. And I think that's really important. I think there's a lot of application forms now, particularly online, which are just overly complicated. So when I was doing this first time, I was researching, going through Job Centre, looking for grants that I could apply for um, through Google searches. And this is just an application where you put your details in and it would give you grants that you are eligible for. It streamlines the process. I would definitely recommend this to anyone. I've already recommended it. Um, it meant I could pay my mortgage, to be quite honest. It meant that, you know, I didn't lose my house, which is also a really big thing. Just the stress that that caused of not being able to, to know that you can secure your home is just a crazy amount of stress. Um, and this is another example as well as some, someone's journey and story that was able to use the portal and find support for themselves as well. So Luke was a um, ex um, army and air force veteran. Um, he was actually with his um, pregnant partner at the time and they faced homelessness. Um, they were moved into temporary accommodation, um, a hotel essentially um, by their council. Um, but they were finding, you know, things just weren't sustainable. They, were having to, they didn't have any cooking facilities at, at the hotel. So they were having to eat out, which they couldn't afford um, to bring food in and things like that. They were struggling to pay their bills. He had to sell his car, use food banks um, and things like that. Um, but he, he essentially called um, a veteran support line who um, both was able to um, get him into specialist accommodation for veterans, but also referred him to Lightning Reach portal um, to be able to get a cost of living grant um, that's currently on the portal from the Royal British Legion. Um, so he went onto the portal, he matched to the Royal British Legion, and he submitted his application. But what he also found that he was able to also match to other support he didn't know was available so he also applied for a grant from the RAF Benevolent Fund, and he was also able to um, apply for a social tariff with BT as well, which he wouldn't have known existed um, if it wasn't through going through the portal and finding it on there. So he was able to save money on his bills as well. Um, but yeah, he said, you know, it was the easiest application he's ever done in his life. Um, and he was able to receive an £890 grant, which was both in food vouchers and also an ongoing payment on energy bills for him as well um, in the new home that he moved to. Um, 
but yeah, it's just a great example, really, of showing um, the difference it can make to someone's life, really, in terms of providing them a bit of um, financial security to um, help them get through a difficult situation, really. And also in terms of being able to find things you might not have known were out there to help people. Um, so how we're asking people to get involved. So what we're doing really is just trying to spread the word as widely as possible that this portal is um, up and running. It's out there to help people. Um, so we're speaking to different organisations um, like this and others and um, to try and really spread the word. So the portal is up. It's free for individuals to use. It's free to signpost people to as well. Um, so I'll send a link that can go to Darren um, as well that can be sent out to people. So um, if you want to start directing people that you might be hearing from that are struggling at the moment to the portal to find out what support they might be eligible for. Um, yeah, it's, it, people, please do go on and, and take a look at it and share the link as widely as possible to people because it's you know really there to help people find what's out there and to save time on searching and hopefully minimise some of the frustration um, that can can happen at the moment with searching and um, filling out complex paperwork and things like that for for support. And if I, I know there's a couple of councils and organisations on this call as well, so if you do want a custom referral link just so you can kind of track the impact that you're having, we can provide that as well, and it allows us to then um, send you data as to how many people have clicked the link how many people have gone on to make an application as well and yeah we're trying to speak to as many different organizations that provide support as well to get them on the platform because um really it becomes much more useful for people um if they're able to match to the widest possible range of support and apply through the portal so we're trying to speak to councils housing associations and um, charities that provide grants to individuals and um, to get them up on the portal as well so if you do know any organizations that you think might be a good fit for the portal and um, please do reach out to us as well and try and connect us with them so it'd be great to be able to speak to them and get them on the portal so people can match to them as well and so that's largely it really um, in terms of um next steps i will send darren sort of the copy of the slide um all the slides and the materials and the videos that were shown today um please as to start signposting people to the portal um that link will be sent out in the slides as well and um, please do contact us if you sort of after this call come up with any um, questions or suggestions for us please do reach out to me as well um yep that's largely it. apologies if i have whizzed through that but i'm very happy to take any questions um although as i said i am sort of fairly new to the organization i've been here about three or four months now so if there is anything that kind of i've not come across before need to come back on i can always um sort of yeah come back come speak to the team and then and come back on anything as well that's brilliant hannah thanks ever so much so um Oh, great. Yeah, you just stopped it. I was, you you preempted what I was about to say, so we can all see each other now. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, um, really, it's really good to see the demonstration. It, it's great to see as well the, the kind of the, the personal stories about how it's had the direct impact on, on, on individuals. That's, it's really um, important to, to kind of see what discernible impact it can have day to day on, on people's lives. Um, I, I'm, well, was, the chat was actually quite, quite, quite quiet, and I think perhaps part of that was because you'd preempted quite a lot of the questions. You explained things really well, um, and uh, there's a lot of information that was that, that was given as we went through. I've made a number of questions as we've been going as as we've been going through. Some of them are fairly quick fire, so it might be worthwhile <laughs> to kind of just go through them just to make sure I've understood things properly, and then um, it, that'll give some time to to ask any questions in 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 the chat as well, where I can see a couple are coming through. So um, if we just go through these kind of quick fire ones it might some of them might be just yes and no am i right that it's predominantly uh, aimed at individuals um that would register um themselves on the portal so it's not like kind of like organizations that are doing yes at the moment we are actually coincidentally building functionality that we're planning to kind of pilot and then launch this year um which will allow um kind of support workers to apply on behalf of someone but at the moment it is largely individuals go register with their own details their own sort of email address their own circumstances um, but we do find sometimes people get help from a family member because we do often get the question as to you know how does potentially a person that might struggle digitally or an older person potentially um, not wanting to stereotype that might potentially be having more sort of issues accessing things online and stuff and you know you might find a family member or a support worker will help people do it on their behalf almost but using their details but yeah as I said we are building in the functionality where organizations and support workers can, can will be able to apply on someone's behalf this year okay yeah, that, in fact that preempted the next question that I was going to ask you um so um if 
you, th there's somebody here who might be, say, an advocate, um, who, who, or su uh, exactly a support worker, or somebody at a housing association who's helping um, a tenant work through the process. Um, if if they did it, they would need to either either put the tenant's details in, and the tenant would have to get back to them if there's a response. Do it with them there and then because it's quite short uh, and quick to to do the process, or um, presumably, could they put their own detail, email address and detail in, and then get in touch with the tenant if if it was that way around? Would that would that work? Um, I think people do kind of do both from what we've been yeah. seeing, because um, we 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 essentially we do provide support through the system. We do sometimes get questions come through from um, support workers and things like that. And what they normally do is they use their details to ask the question, but they'll copy in the resident or the person they're supporting basically into the kind of the queries that they have and stuff. Um, but I think generally we normally say, you know, it should be the support workers working with them using the individual's details. But I imagine it probably does happen as well that people, they will use their email address and then basically fill it out as they were that person and then get back to them as a result, as you say. Great. OK, no, that, that one says. Uh, so charges, you mentioned it's free for um, for for um, individuals to 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 go on to register and to make use of the the service um you you said about organizations if if organizations offer say like i don't know a benevolent fund or uh, some kind of additional funding do, is there charges for those organizations to make use of the uh, um to make use of the service yes no that's basically where sort of our income comes in we as a startup we have had sort of funding from investors and things like that but essentially um, as we go down the line how we look to kind of um, make ourselves viable and we don't want to obviously charge any fees to the individual at all because yeah, exactly. that's just not not a fair way to run or anything like that so where we do get our income from is we charge a subscription fee for charities or organizations that provide the support that want to use this as kind of their sort of grants administration platform essentially um so that starts at 200 pounds per month um, it's kind of got different tiers depending on what um, they're looking for so um, we've got a light tier for instance if you just want to have one of your support schemes on there with a couple of different admin users and a few of the different modules so some of the things that brought up on that video they are essentially optional modules um, so we try to make it quite a flexible system so people can kind of choose which bits and pieces they want which they don't want and depending on how many of those that they have um, will affect the kind of subscription tier that someone has. So it's the things like the open banking, the ID verification, um, having the option to have sort of um, extra eligibility checks and things like that and questions that are asked and extra pieces of evidence updated. They will kind of affect the um, different subscription tier someone has, depending on which of those modules that someone chooses to have. Yeah, OK, that that's 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 that makes sense. Um, um, and. I'll continue with just a quick five one so we get we can kind of like understand it all and then I know that there are yeah. questions coming yeah. through which are a bit more specific so um so obviously it's about um the the focus and the examples that were given were either um cash grants or um maybe cash equivalent in the form of say food vouchers or it might be um um services so you mentioned about the social tariff from bt for instance um other um is, am I right to assume it's predominantly therefore kind of financial stuff which individuals can access? Is, is there anything other, other than that which you said, but maybe like other support or, or, or uh, benefits that, that people are able to access via the portal? Yeah, so we are at the moment onboarding a benefits checker with um, the supplier in best. We partner with them basically. Um, so that's something we're working on, hoping to launch in the next couple of months. Where people, if they want to, will be able to get a benefit and um, benefits check done through the portal to help maximise if there's benefits they're not claiming for at the moment and things like that. Otherwise, it is and predominantly financial support, as you say. That could be depending on what the sort of end charity organisation chooses to do. That could be vouchers. It could be supplying directly a piece of white, you know, white goods furniture and things like that directly to someone or cash grants, depending on what the organisation gives. Um, yeah, because I, I know quite a lot of benevolent funds and grant giving charities are now having quite a kind of holistic approach. So there is things like advice services, mental health services and things like that. And we do ask um, people to confirm if they do want help in those different areas. So that's something we're looking to maybe expand on basically in the future as well to kind of offer that more, more holistic support as well. Um, but we do find quite a lot of the grant giving charities when they start, um, you know, they get the application through. Um, if they see other needs, they might slag to people that there's other services 
services available from from that organization that are already, already dealing with as well so if someone that says has said i'm struggling with my mental health but i also have financial issues they'll be able to get a grant but then also the charity will, will pick up on that and things like that and say you know we've got these advice services and things as well and counseling if, if you if you wish basically yeah that's that's what i was alluding to really so that's great so that mm. yeah, really yeah, you've answered my question uh final thing then um um on, on the kind of sort of these quick fire ones uh, i um, um th there's a link in the presentation we'll include that within the information which we send out as well for individuals to, to register if there's an organization presumably um you gave your details there if there's an organization that says well actually we'd like to subscribe because we operate a benevolent fund or something similar and um, if they just get, drop drop you a line that's the way to for, for them to move forward is it yeah, no, absolutely. We do have um, a link on our website for organisations that are interested in kind of piloting and trying that apply on behalf functionality. So you can go on there and um, basically submit a request saying I am interested in potentially doing this. But any other, yeah, as you say, requests for organisations that might be interested in having their support on the portal. Um, yeah, please email me at that email address on the slide to hannah at lightningreach.org. And yeah, it'd be great to set up a call or a conversation. Uh, I noticed that Deb put in the chat as well that she had some questions. She went onto the website where she was going through, and the website answered those questions as well. Oh, That's, brilliant! That's so, always so, nice. So clearly, yeah. the website is working is working well in terms of answering or preempting the, the, the likely questions that, that that people might might have. And um, so, I'm going I'm going to go to the chat because we've had some uh, specific questions. So. Um, um, one of the things that you mentioned, so it's probably a nice segue into that, is is about open bank accounts. Um, um, probably something more kind of technical or specific one. Hopefully you can answer this actually. Um, does the portal rely on open bank accounts um, in terms of um, the verifying the information uh, that, that's been provided? It's out there as an option. So some charitable organisations to minimise risk of fraud and things like that will um, ask for that, but it's not a must have basically. So they ask for it to be have there sometimes as an option, but there is always the option if someone doesn't want to do that and link their online bank accounts. And some people don't have online banking as well, so can't fulfil that process anyway. There's the option to upload um, bank statements underneath instead, basically. So it's kind of a nice to do it makes things a lot easier both for the individual as well because it's literally a case that you you go through it's through a supplier called plate um so we use like an external provider that's um sort of approved and tested and things like that um so you, you go through that free plate and um, you know you log in and then it just does it for you basically so it makes it so much easier than having to sort of you know scan copies and things like that on your mobile phones or you know going to a scanner and sending it across it then makes it easier for the end organization to find what they need as well but it's not a must-have everyone will always have the option to not do that basically if they don't want to i guess the flip side so another question that that we've had from judith which is kind of really is the flip side to this is is that um, if you make things very easy, then that's for, for people to kind of put lots of information in there. Uh, you can see how that could be a, a, attractive. It's also a lot of kind of quite personal information that people are doing. So I can't, so, so the other side of things is, is that that means that there's a lot of sensitive personal information that is being put into the portal. How secure or what steps, are you able to make any comments on what steps you've taken to make the the, the portal secure itself so that that information isn't compromised in any way? Yeah, no, absolutely. We take, as you say, some of it's very sort of sensitive personal details about people's financial situation, personal details and things like that, which we take incredibly seriously and follow very strict protocols internally um, in order to keep data safe. And we will have data sharing agreements in place with all our partners, and we will only share the applicant's information with the organisation apply, they're applying to um, with their consent as well. So when you go through the process, you might have seen in that demo video, there were some tick boxes saying that you consent to having your um, information shared, but just with the end organisation that's going to be processing your grant application. Um, as mentioned, for things like our open bank, we work with Plaid, which is an FCA regulated provider, um, and on FIDO for our ID verification. So there are external platforms that have been tested and exist. And um, we didn't really think there's much point in kind of building something ourselves when something already like existing was working. So we work with those providers. But um things as well in terms of like cyber security. So um with Cyber Essential certified, we do annual penetration testing. So that essentially means you get hacked 
people that can hack it, try and attempt to hack in, basically, um, to try and, you know, withstand the different kind of defences that we have in place. Um, so that kind of testing takes place every year. Um, and our privacy policy terms and agreements are all reviewed by GDPR specialist lawyers and our data is all secured in the cloud as well. So um, we've got quite strict protocols in place where we don't store things on our own devices, print off paperwork, we're a digital first organisation. So everything's securely stored in the cloud in the UK um, using private API access as well. Um, so yes, just a few examples really of some of the steps that we have in place, but it's really that, you know, we, we're not selling data or sharing data with anyone outside it, it's just that link with the people that we have the data sharing agreements in place, so it's just that end, end organisation that's processing grant applications. So, that's brilliant. We've got, we've got another question from David here, which is, um, um, if, obviously, if you, it's, if it works really well, you get loads of people signing up for it, that's great, because lots of people are accessing uh, um, the, the benefits or the additional finance, um, and one of the reasons why we're, we we thought it was it was important to to showcase this is we're having a focus on the cost of living generally. Um, a lot of yeah. our social media stuff is 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 now directed towards cost of living type issues because tenants tell us that's one of the big things, um, as you would expect that that, that people are dealing with uh, day to day. But um, I guess the more information that's out there, as David highlights, uh, the more it's going to be used. Is there a chance that um, where, where the grants are limited um, and, on, and have to be rationed, that, that those um, grant giving bodies could be overwhelmed, that they'll be oversubscribed? How, how is that dealt with to, to kind of uh, check that things are not going to be kind of over, oversubscribed as part of using the portal? Yeah, no, that's something we work with each of our partners on, because as you rightly say, with certain providers, they might have any unlimited pot of money, and it's the case that once they've spent that, it is spent, and then they have to kind of wait for the next kind of grant application round to come through. Um, so we're constantly speaking to and working with them, and they basically have the option to kind of turn themselves on and off on the portal as, as needed, really, so they're not going to get the case where they're receiving applications that they just can't fund, because once they've met that kind of that quota or criteria they have the option of you know maybe turning themselves off for a few weeks or something like that until they start their next grant funding round up so that way we're not you know frustrating kind of end users by them you know potentially matching and trying to apply for something that's not there um, but so yeah we work with them very closely to understand their kind of need, each organization's needs and um yeah things like that really and um, it's quite interesting actually just kind of feeding in from my kind of um experience in my last role because um, you get um, general grant giving charities I'm thinking ones like Glassball turn to us and things like that that will get oversubscribed quite quickly but then um, occupational benevolent funds are really undersubscribed in some ways they have funds that they're happy and willing to use but not people a lot of people realize that benevolent funds exist really so that's the struggle they have in terms of um, awareness that you know that there are all these different charities across the UK that support different professions and former and retired and families and things like that are people in those professions as well so that's something the portal we're hoping to um you know be able to share more information as well so people didn't realize that occupation benevolent charities exist if they match them on the portal it helps build that awareness for them as well so so presumably if um based on what you were saying earlier because they because an individual might have put the the details in uh, and they've gone through the matching and and perhaps weren't matched immediately with, with something because something was switched off. If that's then switched back on, do they do they get notification to say actually there might be some other additional um, things that, that they're entitled to? Yeah, I believe that does take place. We send emails out to people um, as new yeah, grants are added back and things like that. Um, and we will notify people through um, support as well. Um, so if they've not managed to match to anything and we know something's reopening soon, we will flag that to people as well in emails um, to say, um, I'm, you know, sorry, we've not got anything at the moment, but the scheme is reopening in one or two weeks. So, you know, please, please do sort of check back again and things like that in a couple of weeks time. So you'll see that pop back up in your support match screen. So I've got a couple of questions here, but I'm not quite sure that I, I fully understand. So I might ask whether um, um, David and or Deb are able to, to um, uh, come in on, on this question. But the first, first one's for David. Um, um, I don't know if he's happy to come in, so I'll, I'll ask the question anyway, and hopefully I can cover it. Um, so um, some grants are linked to a specific make of goods. So I think David's talking about sort of white goods here. Um, mm -hmm. With, that are linked to like the maker, I, I guess it means that the, the manufacturer. 
and may not necessarily be suitable for the customer. So how can we overcome that? So um, are there other things where people might be able to access white goods, but but um, they um, it turns out that 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 is not a suitable um, good. Presumably, there's an opportunity to kind of both talk that through with the individual, and if the if the landlord's involved, to, to, there might need to be an additional conversation there. Yeah, and I was going to say, because that's a really good point, and all I was thinking, again, kind of through my experience working with grant-making charities, um, you know, normally even when um, we find that grant-making charities are using the portal, a lot of them still want to keep that personal touch, so they will speak, you know, if people are having issues and things like that, they will still pick up the phone or email people and things like that um, and kind of get that conversation going, so... Um, you know, I'd like to think really that if, if someone is speaking about having a good that wouldn't meet their needs and stuff, that that grant giving organisation would be able to work with that person and hopefully find a supplier or, you know, an item that, that will meet the needs that they have. But I guess that's very much for, you know, the grant giving organisation to work through with the individual, really. Yeah. Um, and, and I think Deb's just put there about, um, oh, David, yeah, did you, were you looking to come in? If we co did we cover that? Yeah, yeah. I, I was more uh, specifically thinking about uh, links with manufacturers where the uh, the, the grantees were uh, the, a scheme where that uh, people could apply for those goods, uh, and a group of the grant making trusts get together to provide a pool for those goods at a reduced price, so more and more people had access to the pool of goods. And there's another sort of uh, angle to that is, particularly on the sort of mobility devices, a lot of the uh, charities that you're working with uh, get a lot of applications for mobility scooters, and they will only fund three, let's say three mile an hour scooters where people want the eight mile ones, eight mile an hour ones. And it's obvious that the uh, grant making, not the grant making trust, the actual agents who have applied for the uh, the, the funds, some people like uh, Saffa, or British Legion or so forth, have contracts with these firms. So they won't consider providing goods outside these contracts because they get them sort of cheaper, but they're not suitable for the grantees. So how do you sort of uh, propose to get around that problem? That's a very interesting point. And um, one thing um, that's just flagged to me is that when I was working previously at the Association of Charitable Organisations, um, something that was starting to be discussed, as you said, was a group of these charities getting together to um, you know, get suppliers, I said, like maybe get discounts and things like that because their charity is working together and things like that. Um, so some common suppliers I know that are used are things like family fund business services, um, AOC supplies, and I think um, they were potentially looking to have conversations with those suppliers to see if they could get some kind of agreement and deal in place. Um, I've actually still got quite close links with the Association of Charitable Organisations and still a really good relationship with the CEO there. I'm actually meeting him for lunch in a couple of weeks. So that's certainly something I can flag to them as well, as you say, about concerns, maybe receiving the right things or particularly with mobility scooters, like not always receiving something that's that's right because of the contracts and the agreements that are in place. And um, that's probably something that'd be good to flag to them because they can flag it to members and have that discussion with them um, amongst grants giving char charities as well. That sounds like a good, good, good course, good course of action, really. Um, yeah, and, and there is a, and there is a, a, a new website called Charity Excellence, which uh, I'm sure you've highlighted and, and realised that actually have a resource section. So they actually, uh, this is resource resources for individuals and organisations. So, which is basically donated goods and free goods, new goods, and so forth uh, that people can tap into. And this sounds to me like an ideal way of, uh, of getting sort of like a, a mutual effort together to, to uh, try and distribute those goods, because it's not only money that uh, people want, it's, it's the actual goods themselves. Yeah, Hannah, that's maybe, maybe it's something you would take away as a com conversation to, to mm. with, with us, see if there's some way that you could maybe work together in the future with, with, with that resource. Um, I've yeah, no, Charity Excellence actually reached out to us and then we sent them some information about portals. So if I can get a um, conversation going with them, that would be great. Sounds like you're on the same same page there. Um, I, I've, we've had a question from Deb and, and um, 
I don't know, I don't know, she's used some acronyms, I don't know who they are, so um, I, I don't know if Deb can come in there, because what she suggested is, is um, a couple of organisations that might be worthwhile um, working with. Um, who, who are ERSA and CTW? Yeah. Hello, um, so ERSA is the Employment Related Service Organisation and, and CTW Communities at Work. So um, both have a great many members, I mean, we're talking in the thousands of organisations that whether you call them social prescribers or not, that's what they actually get involved with and do. Um, so just yesterday, um, and the NASP is the National Association of uh, Social Prescribers, sorry. So yesterday I was on a webinar that they'd organised, there were 770 participants on the webinar. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and because it's linked with the NHS and doctor surgeries and housing associations and, 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 you've got an, a potentially ginormous audience. Yeah. I think this sounds crackingly good, um, except... I, at the back of my mind, I wonder about the duplication of requests. And it goes back to what David just said about um, white goods. So we're a housing association. We provide white goods. And these are new through um, organisations that deliver direct. And we do negotiate contracts. But to be quite honest, I don't think you're going to get a better price than the one we deal with anyway, because it's one of the biggest in the country. However, they could have had white goods from us nine months ago and then go onto a website such as yours. And because there is no interconnectivity, um, they could potentially end up with a nice washing machine and another fridge and um, based on their needs, they would qualify. However, they'd also have something that they could use and trade. And so that was the first, that was a sort of a major consideration that a number of people get direct grants from us as housing associations because we have huge pots that we have to use for welfare so we're paying for utilities white goods carpets school uniforms you name it and then they'll apply on a grant site which looks great because i can see there's there's a couple of providers that you know some good information i've just had a little click through but they potentially could be double dipping mm. Yeah, because we do try and ask people, oh, have you received any support? But whether people, you know, always will, will say yes or no or put in who they've received the support from, we can't always guarantee that. Although we do try and, you know, have that question in place, saying, have you received this within the last 12 months or something like that? Um, so, yeah, no, it's something we need to sort of consider, as you say, sort of working with maybe different partners and things like that. So really that duplication and, you know, potentially the same thing being given twice and things or the same case looked at twice as well. Um, yeah, because it could point. be with white goods, for example, that you, it's not that we're the, we're not the world's police and we're not there to stop people participating and, you know, and, and being helped and, and getting what makes their life better. But even if you ask the landlord, is this this nature of appliance OK in the accommodation in which they're they're based, it would certainly help to flag it up because there are types of accommodation where they can't have some of these items anyway because they're provided centrally or um, the nature of flooring and all sorts of things. So I just wondered if, it, if it's just thinking along those lines that if it could, like you say, you're gonna check bank accounts, you're gonna check statements and we do benefit checks and calculators as well. And it often highlights that they're not short of money, they're just poorly spending it. And then other people who really should be asking we never see them cross our doorstep. And that's our bigger issue is trying to find people we could help mm. in other ways. So I think it's really good, but I, I worry about the people who are very canny about where they go and how they access these things. Yeah, no, thank you. I made a note of that to discuss with the team. But yeah, as you say, we we part of what we're doing in the portal is to try and help organisations to use what they have in the most efficient, you know, reaching the areas and people that are most in need. So that is, you know, something that we want to take away and consider definitely because that's that, that's a part of what we're definitely trying to do as the portal. Yeah, I guess there's, a, there's an issue there, isn't there, about checks and balances. But at the other side, I guess what we also want to make sure is is that uh, there's a trade off between. Um, between the duplication and also making sure that there are people that are able to use the uh, a, a portal um, for for the, the you know the vast majority of people who perhaps haven't had any access to any types of support or goods or anything as well. Thank you. That's great. Okay, so um, I think we probably exhausted all of the questions there. So um, unless anybody's kind of really shouting for something that we've missed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody said, I've seen James's hand has just gone off. James. Thank you, Darren. Um, a question for Hannah. Um, how many 
organizations are currently registered with with the organization um so at the moment in terms of who we've got 17 different organizations where you can kind of go on and make that direct application basically mm -hmm. um so yeah 17 at the moment and we want to grow that's kind of 40 or 50 plus at least this year um just to try and make that kind what's of your um, what's your what you target do? what yeah, sort of target to, 40 or 50 say, what sort of target, is... Sorry, what sort of target are you looking at? I mean, to be really effective, you'll need 100 plus um, organizations because your the number of service users will be in the tens, if not hundreds of thousands. Um, and with 50 or 60 organizations, that's quite a limited pool, if, if you like. What, what's the overall sort of vision uh, for Lightning Reach? Um, yeah, I think in future it will be sort of more in the sort of address organisations and things like that. As you say, at the moment, we've kind of got that um, 40 to 50 target and that's really sort of resource based that we're quite a small team of the seven of us essentially, basically, that are working. So in terms of the time it takes for our sort of um, tech developers and things like that to onboard a scheme, it takes a little bit of time for each one. So that 40 or 50 target is basically made on the assumption that it takes a certain amount of time for each scheme to you know have those conversations get them onto the portal, test them and everything like that. Um, so that's why we're kind of working to those figures for the first year at least. And um, as you say, hopefully in terms, you know, if, if we grow, if we get more people on board, if we become more viable, get more funding and things like that, then we can get more team members on board and then, you know, hopefully scale it from there. We're hoping it will be a bit of a snowball effect from that point, basically. But yeah, as you say, so I know things like Turn to Us Grant Search, they have thousands of um, different grants on there. Um, although you can't make a direct application, that's where our sort of unique selling point comes on. But no, I completely agree with you. We want to get as much on on there as possible really to but we just need to do it in a kind of manageable way hannah just to say though um that they're the organizations where you can make use for the direct application for the grants via the portal but there's a, a lot of information about other grants that are that are, are on there which are which mm. you don't have that additional functionality isn't there so do, yes do you no yeah they... about, you have an idea about the kind of numbers okay it looks like that certainly more than 50 60 from what i can kind of look yeah at. no it's um it's several hundred in terms of because we're doing it region by region we've got um someone on our team that's responsible for basically onboarding all these different schemes as what we call light matches that's where you don't you match them you don't apply directly through the portal but then you get, then go onto the website basically and you're kind of signposted through the portal that way to something you might be eligible for um but yeah that that's in the hundreds definitely i think it's probably a four or four or five hundred run at the moment but we're, we're constantly working on this at the moment so that's increasing all the time um but we've done i think the northeast we're working on scotland at the moment and wales and we're kind of yeah sort of working through region by region so that will throughout the year you know that that'll get into the thousands of schemes um that's lots, lots of local support and things like that yeah that's great uh darren just just two quick points that uh came to mind is that if you try to promote the discretionary funds from the local authorities then the lga is is a particularly useful organization to go through because that captures all the local authorities if you're trying to capture mm. the discretionary funds but and also, I don't know this one maybe for Darren is uh, would the, we had a, a, a webinar last week or the week before about uh, the furniture uh, furniture poverty, and I'm just thinking how this would tie in with that. Well, I th I think that there's a direct link actually already that's been made with uh, the um, the furniture poverty charity that we were we were discussing. I think they're already um, engaged in in this process. Is that right, Hannah? Yes, no, they're um, part of our social innovation council, so they are sort of have been feeding into the development of this project over the years as well. So that might be was it Claire Donovan that spoke or yeah, yeah. someone else from the team? Yeah. yeah, no, she, she's she's great. Um, yeah, no, she's um, been very actively involved, um, sort of in helping us in discussions as well. So yeah, no, they've been absolutely fantastic to work with. Uh, part of what we're trying to do, just as many of the other organisations that we're working with, is to try and create these networks so that they can all speak to each other and that they can work more effectively in collaboration. So mm -hmm. likewise, we do have uh, very strong links with uh, the LGA. In fact, we uh, recently issued um, a, a kind of a joint press release from the from the Mayor of London about some funding in housing just before Christmas. So um, if need be, we've, we've got links there uh, that um, we can kind of facilitate with Hannah as well. 
and, and this Thank this you. is also this is also keys in with the leveling up agenda from the department of leveling up because of the region you know you're bringing more funding into the regions so you're obviously leveling up the regions uh so the, you know the input from from government agencies is is particularly important absolutely david yeah um that's yeah the key thing okay so um I'm going to say I'm going to kind of bring things to a close. I promise you that you get a few extra minutes today, everybody. So um, we'll 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 do we'll do that. Um, so um, a big collective thank you to, to Hannah. Um, it was great to learn a bit more about um, the, the new portal, um, which um, is is live and, and and working really well. We wish you every success with that in the future as well. Um, thank you. Yeah, I can see some claps as well from other people. So it's obviously very well received. So thank you. Um, I think I found it, found it useful. Uh, just, to, uh, just to confirm a few things that I said at the beginning about how we'll post it today's session up on YouTube. We've also got uh, well, some materials which we'll distribute after. Um, uh, so hopefully later today, you're, they'll, they'll be in your inbox. Uh, we're taking a break next week from um, our webinars. We've actually got our trust, quarterly trustee board meeting next Wednesday. So that's why we're not doing uh, a webinar next week. Uh, but the week after that, we've, we'll be um, um, inviting Debbie Lana back and she's going to be talking um, about tenant satisfaction measures and an update on on that. Um, some of you may have seen recently that the um, regulators issued a kind of an easy read version of the tenant satisfaction measures. Um, so we'll be looking at how maybe organisations are responding and implementing that now that we know the final set of tenant satisfaction measures which have been published. Uh, we've then got a couple of others um, that are in the pipeline um, for February. We've uh, we've got another session with Debbie as well on uh, professionalisation, which will be taking place on the 15th of February. Um, and then we're doing a joint event, really excited to be able to, to um, announce further details of this. We've got a newsletter that's coming out later in the week, which will, which will highlight um, that um, joint session that we're doing with the Housing Diversity Network on diversity in housing and the links with tenant involvement. Uh, so um, that's going to be on the 22nd of February. Uh, so I think that kind of closes uh, all the additional information that I had as well. Um, in addition to thanking Hannah, I'd like to thank everybody who's joined today's uh, webinar session. Uh, some really great questions, uh, insightful uh, information as well. A few things for us to take away um, as well and to, to, to work on and look at. Um, and um, um, Oh, and we've just had an idea from Deb about young tenants engaged in their communities. Yeah, that would be a really good one, wouldn't it? If we can kind of get something about um, younger people and, and, and involvement. So, um, yeah, we'll look into that as well. Um, so, OK, thanks, guys. Uh, thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, good to see you all. And, um, yeah, look forward to the next session. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.